In this video, we'll explore how to create a waterfall chart and apply conditional formatting to our matrix table in Power BI. As a quick recap, we've now completed the matrix table, net profits running total chart, and the year over year net profits comparison chart in our previous videos. So in this video, we're going to continue to use the year over year net profits calculation we created in our previous video. We'll start by creating a new waterfall visualization, which will break down our year over year net profits by product. We'll also add the yearly net profits comparison to our matrix table as two new columns for both the value and percentage, then apply conditional formatting to both of them. The end result of this video will be these two additions you see here. All right, let's get started. So to start with, just like I did in my previous videos, I'm going to copy and paste one of these visualizations to save myself a lot of the effort of the redesigning and formatting it so I don't have to go through all that again. So I'm going to come up here to the net profit uh, running total by date hierarchy. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that. I'm going to put that right down here. There we go. Let's drop that down a little bit. Perfect. And now I can take this and convert it to a waterfall chart. So I'm going to come up here to the right and select the waterfall chart visualization. There we are. And let's clean up the category and information in here a little bit. So this visualization needs to be the product brand. I'm going to close that. I'm going to take brand name and put that into category. That's step one. Now for this visualization, I don't want to show the net profit. I instead want to show the year over year net profits. So I'm going to move that down to my tooltips. I'm going to replace it with the year over year net profit value. Perfect. Taking a look at that chart now on the bottom, we can see that it has all of the brand names in there, as well as the values leading up to that, to that 0.51 billion. Now, currently this is doing it for all of the years. However, when you use any of the other visuals, you can see how they interact with each other and cross filter each other, which is a great thing about Power BI. So let's do this. Let's go up here to my running total and I'm gonna select a quarter. So if I click on 2009 quarter two, the net profits as you can see change there. Here we have for all of these categories down there on that lower left, the year over year calculations is now showing that some brand names had a year over year from 2009 versus 2008 quarter two, ones that went up and other ones that went down. And as I can continue to click on these values to filter it down to a specific date range, it's reflecting that in all of my other visualizations. It's reflecting that on my chart at the top. It's reflecting that on the waterfall chart. So it's continually mirroring and aligning these visualizations together. And that's what it does by default in Power BI Desktop. It lets you automatically link them together whenever you add a new visualization and it lets them communicate so you can click on one set of data and then see that reflected in other ones. Similar thing, if I clear this filter here and I click on any month in the, the chart here at the top, I'm also going to now see, for in this example, 2009 May. So all of my other charts in this visualization are now being filtered to 2009 May as well. So go ahead and clear that. So it's a great way to interact with the data and see the data work together and stay aligned as you look at sections of the data. The last thing I want to do to the waterfall chart, I'm going to go ahead and rename that. I'm going to come up to title. I'm going to go to the title section. I'm going to call that year over year net profit by product brand. Perfect. And now that's good to go and ready to use. Now the last thing that I want to do is I want to add those two columns to my matrix table because that's one other thing that I needed. So I'm going to come over here to that value section, open up DAX measures, and I'm going to add year over year net profits down here at the bottom. Because if I scroll over, I can see that it's added in. Perfect. And then as well, I'm going to add the year over year net profits percentage. Those are both going to be in here. I'm actually going to resize this a little bit just to get the column smaller. And the great thing with those is within the visualization, I can resize the columns. As you can see, it starts to wrap it. And my goal is I'm reducing the white space that you see right here to the left of it to try to make sure that it is as maximized as possible for the size of the column. So I'm not using it more room than I need to. Now, the thing that I want to do with both of these is I want to add some conditional formatting. And I'm going to add two types of conditional formatting, but let's walk through them one at a time. So to start with, I'm going to go to year over year net profits. I'm going to hit this down arrow right here. I'm going to go to conditional formatting. And I'm going to choose one of these three options. We have an option for background color, font color, and data bars. So let's start with data bars. It's one that a lot of you might be familiar with from the Excel environment. I'm going to click that. And this has opened up an interface 
There's a few settings you can apply in here in terms of changing the minimum or the maximum from lowest values to fixed values. There's a clever option in here where you can show bar only, which will actually hide the value completely and just show the data bar. But for our situation, it's totally fine to keep the calculations just as is. So all I'm gonna do is just hit okay, not change anything. Beautiful, and you can see in here, it is now adding the data bars in there. You scroll down to the bottom, you can see the biggest your net profits for specifically Maryland. So that actually had the highest value and that's what it's comparing it as. You might notice as well too, take a close look. The subtotals here in our example, like United States, um, all of the subtotals do not have any conditional formatting applied to them. And that's by design. When you apply conditional formatting, it only applies it to the lowest level visible in your matrix table. It doesn't do the grand totals or any subtotals. So watch as soon as I drill up. I've drilled up, now it is applied to the country level. If I drill up again, it is now applied to the continent level. So it will automatically roll up your conditional formatting to apply it to the lowest level showing in the matrix table. As I expand it out, it now applies to the lower level. If I was to use the go to next level in the hierarchy button, it still continues to keep it at that level. So it's a really nice way to continue to work with and see the conditional formatting applied at the appropriate level without ever accidentally applying it at the grand total or subtotal level. Go ahead and put it back there. Do one more down. There we go. Now on top of conditional formatting in here, for these bars that you can add into there, you can also do some font coloring, which I really like. So that can be found over your over near net profits. And if you open it up, you have conditional formatting. And again, you have a few options. You have background color, font color, and data bars. Now background color, I'm not a huge fan of. I'll just show you a quick example. I find that it's way too much color. I find it a bit um, intense to have that much in there. So as you can see here, a lot of color variation going into there, and it's just not something that I'm a particularly big fan of. Instead, I would rather do font coloring, which applies the same principle. However, it only colors just the font itself and not the background, so it's much more subtle. So I'm going to apply that, hitting that down arrow, go to conditional formatting and font color this time. And we're gonna do a couple of little tricks too as well. Because the biggest thing that I'm trying to avoid is I actually just want a traffic light color for this. I want a solid red for anything that's negative and a solid green for anything that's positive. So I'm going to change this from lowest value to a number, from highest value to a number. And what I'm going to say is that anything that's zero or higher, meaning zero percent or greater, so a positive percentage, that's going to get colored the solid green. Anything that is zero uh, minus, 0.00001, a really small percentage, anything that's essentially now a negative number or smaller will then get colored this solid red color. It removes that variability in the middle, which causes some weird muddy colors sometimes to appear. So we've now kind of created a traffic light KPI of solid red to solid green. There are some options to color by rules where you can set up something more advanced. But for our scenario, we only want those two colors for the, the two numbers that we have in here. So the zero and that minus one works good enough for our scenario. And I'm gonna hit okay. There we are. Now at the moment, because I haven't selected any year, they're all gonna be green, but let me go ahead and uh, let's pick 2009 quarter three. Let's use that as a filter. I wanna see my data reflected for what were my year over year calculations for 2009 and quarter three. So I'll click that. There we go. And now we can see that year over year net profits is showing some positive and negative, but we can see all the calculations working in here and then showing us extra value when we look at this, helping us easily identify where the positives versus the negatives are. So it's a great way to add additional layers of visual impact to a matrix table, kind of combining the best of charting with a table itself. So it's a nice hybrid between the two of them when you use something like this. All right, so that about covers it for this video. In our next video, we're gonna explore further parts of this report and specifically focus on how to create an image and title section, as well as some single value cards, which are a great way of calling out headlight or banner type values that you would wanna show with the important information at the top of your report page.